welcome to Newsroom Series today. I'm Malumide Mukoli. Our focus is the Southwest region. Thank you for joining us. But we'll take you first back to our developing story on the impeachment of Edo State Deputy Governor, Mr. Philip Shaibu, by the State Assembly. The impeachment, which took place during the House in plenary following the adoption of the report of the seven-man investigative panel set up by the Assembly to probe allegations of misconduct against Mr. Shaibu. Incidentally, a federal high court in Abuja was to resume sitting in the lawsuit filed by Mr. Shaibu challenging the move by the State House of Assembly to impeach him. Mr. Shaibu and his principal, the Edo State Governor, Mr. Godwin Obasaki, have been embroiled in a face-off over his decision to contest for the state governorship seat on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. In a swift reaction to that impeachment, the man in the eye of the storm condemned his purported impeachment over what he describes as trumped-up charges. He says it's both an attack on his person and democratic principles and dissent into dictatorship. I denounce in strongest term the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It's a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harsh because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People's Democratic Party, PDP, an ambition that is a legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's a sad reality that in our political landscape, ambition is meant with resistance. And those in power seek to silence opposition through illegitimate means. I have dedicated my life to serving the good people of Edo State with integrity and honesty. I have worked tirelessly to improve the life of our citizens. I've uphold the values of democracy and justice. And yet, in return, I am faced with baseless accusations and a blunted disregard for due process and rule of law. The allegations brought against me are nothing more than a post screen to conceal the true motive behind this impeachment. It's a flagrant abuse of power and a betrayal of the trust that the people of Edo have placed in their elected officials. Meanwhile, a new deputy governor has been sworn in in Edo State to replace Mr. Phyllis Schreiber, who was impeached earlier today. Mr. Amor Bayo Godwins took the oath of office this afternoon following his confirmation as deputy governor designate of the state by the State House of Assembly in Edo State. The brief event was attended by supporters and state government functionaries. The 38-year-old deputy governor is coming from the private sector where he has experience in the oil and gas sector. He was the candidate of the Labour Party for the House of Representatives in the last election. In the southwest, the Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered the remand of former Central Bank Governor Godwin Mefili in AFCC custody until Thursday, April the 11th, when the court will give its ruling on his bail application. The presiding judge, Justice Ramanu Shudi, also ordered the remand of Mr. Mefili's co-defendant, Henry Omoile at the Kirikiri prison, pending the court's ruling on his bail also on Thursday. The court ordered the remand of both men after listening to the bail application filed by their counsel,
Mr. Levi Lawal. Mr. Godwin Omefili and his co-defendant, Henry Sioma Omole, were arraigned on a fresh 26-count charge over alleged abuse of office and allocation of billions of United States dollars. Much obliged for your company as Newsroom Series continues with our focus on the Southwest region and to education. About 5,000 secondary school students in Ogun State have been trained on how to use the abacus counting machine skills to solve science, technology, engineering, and mathematics questions and thereby enable them to break world records. At an event held at the Dipo Dino Stadium in Ijebode, State Commissioner of Education, Science, and Technology, Professor Abayomi, Ari Babu explained that it's to develop and sharpen their innit and God-given skills in solving science, technology, and mathematics for national and international competitions and national development. While affirming that the various initiatives and reforms in the education sector in the state has continued to yield positive results, he challenges the youth in the state to make themselves available for the various initiatives. Um, this, uh efforts in the right direction to lift the nation so that we can actually achieve our potentials. You see, if you look at competitions, um, Olympiads and so on and so forth, Mathematics Olympiads and so many competitions, you see that it's the uh, Asian Tigers that are actually uh, topping. You see um, students coming from China, students coming from Japan, you know, and so on and so forth. They'll be the ones actually coming top. And it's part of the things we are doing now that they usually do. So with this type of efforts, we have been seeing improvements. And you see that even today, you see that our students, even from public schools, we have those from private schools, we have some of them from public schools, and they won in those various competitions. I'm very happy that this is happening. I'm proud that um, Ogun State, the investment the government is making in education is also showing. You can see that our students, um, also came tops, those of them from the private school also, and those of them from the public school, like I said. And you saw uh, uh, some learners that came from um, Benin, um, Port Harcourt, um, and I think um, one, of that, one of that town, I mean, another uh, city, uh, maybe in the east. So you, for, for me, it's a positive development for, for this country to have young children being introduced to this type of uh, to this type of thing at the early age. Also on education, the governor of Bikiti State, Mr. Abiodun Yebanji, says his administration will constantly support education as a viable weapon for national, for national development and social development. Governor Yebanji stated this in Adokiti during the 28th Convocation Ceremony of Bikiti State University, EXU, and inauguration of the new Chancellor of the institution, Dr. Tunji Olofe. A university degree is a stepping stone to self-development, creating better entrepreneurship outcomes and contributing positively to the society. This is the charge by the visitor to the Ukiti State University, Governor Biodo Yibanji, during its convocation ceremony in Adogiti, the state capital. The 28th Convocation Ceremonies of EXU attracted various guests from across the country, an event described as a celebration of success and hard work. <laughs> governor Yebanji, who is the first alumnus of the school to become governor of the state, appeals to the graduates not to take this fleet lightly, as he reminds them that education remains a weapon in ensuring social, political and economic stability. Education remains a weapon in destroying social 
political and economic growth in their society. This is why we continue to support the education sector. We are committed to ensuring our education institutions are the highest standard. The Vice Chancellor of the institution believes the successes recorded by the school is as a result of the support from the state government, which approved a major increase in the subvention to the Ekiti State University from 260 million naira to 410 million naira. When I came in in 2019, August 2019, the amount we were using to procure 14,500 liters of AGO, what we call this one, that same amount today can only buy 2,000 liters. And that underscores the intervention made by His Excellency that look, this university must enjoy electricity supply for 24 hours. Honorary doctorates were also conferred on four distinguished personalities the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye. Former Governor of Ikiti State, Niyi Adebayo, billionaire businesswoman for Lawrence Shoa Lakija, and former Minister of Health, Julius Adelui. <laughs> One of the events that heralded the graduation was the convocation lecture delivered by former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibado, Professor Iduwo Lainka, who is rooting for the Nigerian university system that serves as an agent for socio-economic development. He raised concerns that the country's education sector faces significant challenges that can only be resolved through adequate investment and support. The government, the individuals, parents, other stakeholders, we have to put our heads together and the position of the Nigerian university. We're not doing too well, but uh, there are opportunities for us to improve and uh, achieve more in the years to come. It's in our own uh, enlightened self-interest to make sure that we have a viable university system. These are some of the problems the state government believes the higher subvention will solve as it tasks the school management to justify the increased subvention by showing greater commitment to work and avoiding incessant strikes to allow for smooth school calendar. Welcome back. In Trade and Commerce, the Lagos State Government has asked traders of Katangua Market to stop all forms of payment to the companies assigned to build shops in that location because their contract has been terminated over two years ago. This is according to the Special Advisor on Electronic Geographic Information System and Urban Development, Mr. Olajide Babatunde, who made the comments during an inspection of the area and marked for the relocation of Computer Village traders which is part of the urban regeneration scheme of the state government. This is the popular Katangua market along the Lagos and Belkita Expressway, where graded household and clothing items are sold. <laughs> and soon, this will also be home to vendors of phone and computer gadgets who are presently at the computer village in Ikaja. A reported case of fraudulent acts on the part of project contractor assigned to build shops for existing traders in Katangua brought the special advisor on electronic geographic information system and urban development, Mr. Olajide Babatunde, and some members of the State House of Assembly and the State Building Control Agency to the area to meet with some of the traders who have made payment to the company, asking them to terminate all forms of transactions with the company. The Executive Council of Lagos State based on provisions of the agreement that have failed fundamentally, particularly the conditions precedence, has already terminated the agreement and contract with Bridgeways two years ago. What did I say? Two years ago. So it is illegal for anybody to continue to collect money from you on behalf of Bridgeways. Your shop will be visited, will be known, before anything will be done on you. It's not a matter of somebody going to go out and John, Shuku, and you start writing name. We all went to school. And accountability is very key. Nobody is going to change anybody, and the right procedure will be done. Some of the traders share their concerns over the matter. What is the fate of those who rent their space and not shops? 
The chairman of the State House Committee on Physical Planning and Urban Development says a petition was submitted to the Assembly highlighting some of the anomalies of the complex. Bridgeways is a contractor that have a contract with Lagos State Government and with what the, with the briefing that the SA, EGIS and Urban have briefed us now, we've seen it with this uh, briefing that, they've, that they don't have any contract with Bridgeways again since 2022. And after that, Bridgeways still continue to sell the space. In order to resolve the issue on ground, the state government is requesting for the traders necessary information by filling the forms that will be handed over to them. Every single person who has paid anything or has a shop here, even if you don't have a receipt, that's you didn't pay anything, somebody dashed you a shop. If you are a resident here, you understand? Don't lie. Don't put that. Don't, don't, do not lie. If you do not lie on this form. Because if you come to this place and you collect this form and you lie, you are liable. Please be sincere with your information and please fill the form in capital letter. We do not want anyone to give us any unreadable language, please. And possibly because we are in the global village now, we need your email address so that we can easily disseminate the information and you can get it. Some staff of the accused companies are already being questioned. Victims of the construction fraud are optimistic that the issues will be resolved soon so they can get their shops in good time. Now, in, in its determination to promote acquisition of technical skills by young people to promote entrepreneurship, the Ondo State Government has promised to build two new model technical schools in the state before the end of the year. Governor Loki Aidatua made the promise at the Ondo State Entrepreneurship Summit held in Akure, the state capital. He says the current global economic realities have made it necessary for young people to gain technical skills that will make them solution providers and entrepreneurs. That we advance the creativity and ingenuity of our youth and entrepreneurs. The current economy of our country demands the urgent intervention of innovative entrepreneurs. We recognize that government alone cannot drive economic growth, rather, it is through collaboration with the private sector and the empowerment of our youth that we can unlock the full potential of our economy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have been prioritizing the development and support for our SMEs and MSMEs NATO entrepreneurs, grassroots artisans, and traders. The Ondo State Entrepreneurship Agency on here has been at the forefront of driving an inclusive and vibrant economic development. So now, Mr. Lokiai, that you were just speaking. There is the has been in the governorship seat in Ondo State for a few months. He has to recontest for the seat of power this year later. Yet his first hurdle is securing the APC governorship ticket next Saturday. He'll be counting on the impact he's made in the little time that he served and the fact that he served as governor Rotima Kredulu's deputy for some years to be in his favor while delegates' votes will hope that that will be enough and sufficient to get him across the finish line. Now, joining us in the studio is the spokesperson to the Deputy Governor of Ondo State, Mr. John Paul Akindero. It's a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you, Olumide. Now, what does Governor Aedatiwa have going for him, given the confidence that he's had having served in this as a Deputy Governor before, now he is in the driver's seat ahead of the coming polls? 
thank you very much. Uh, if you look at all the aspirants uh, jostling for this seat, for the number one seat in all those states, you will see that Governor Lucky Orimison, I hear that he was, stands tall. He's been, he's been around for a while. Uh, he was the deputy governor. Now, since he's been at the driver's, in the driver's seat for the past uh, since 100 days thereabouts, he's done a lot of massive reforms. We've had projects going, we've had uh, novel initiatives, we've had new things coming on board. The states, you know, from south to the north, central, everyone is happy with what the governor is doing. The governor is someone who is very dutiful, someone who is unassuming, someone who is receptive. Someone who is passionate, is compassionate, he loves the masses. So, immediately he got in, forget all the political drama, you know, that happened prior to his emergence. But immediately he got in, he hit the ground running. He did so. And, you know, from education to healthcare to infrastructure, Ondo State is flourishing. So, for an average Ondo State person, why do you want to change your top striker? Why do you want to change this top performer? Do you understand? So it is possible for us to say, okay, fine, let him rest. Another person should come on board. But we don't know. We don't, we don't have someone who have his, who has his own kind of stuff. So he is the right person to lead on those states, you know, forward. He's pushing. He has all it takes. He has all his programs mapped out. You just showed one of the programs that took place in Ondo State over the weekend. You can see that the masses, the youth, the elderly, you know, pensioners, uh, young school leavers, young all employed in Ondo State are all around him. Since he came on board, he's paid over 1.5 billion era in pension, I mean, to pensioners. He's had, he's approved recruitment of uh, 2,000 teachers. In the state, he's on massively in terms of education. He's paid uh, three months out of the salary areas of um, two uh, Rufus Giwa Polytechnic um, uh, staff. He's done. He, he, he gave grants of about uh, one billion era to the University of Medical Sciences in Ondo, and the same with Olusha uh, uh, Gwagagu University of Science and Technology in Okitukwa, one point two billion era. He's paid five hundred and fifty million era white fees for uh, young people in Ondo State, you know, to offset, you know, their financial burden being faced by parents or guiders in Ondo State. So who wouldn't be happy with that kind of governor? So he's come on board and he's someone who doesn't listen. He does, he's, not, he's not distracted. He's focused. He has his mind set on his goals. He, 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 you look at him, you haven't, you haven't seen, you, can, you can't even see the governor anywhere making a statement against his opposition. I was going to ask you about the support from market women, associations, and the students and the youth of Ondo State. How do you gauge that? Across the length and breadth of Ondo State, the endorsement is massive. From the APC stalwarts, from elder statesmen, from market women, from artisans, from traders, from school children, from everyone. And you know, it's, you, this, the, the endorsement you are is getting is not because he's lucky. Of course we are lucky. But because he's performing, he's doing well, he's, 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 it is because of his purposeful leadership. He has his mind set on the goals. He has his eyes on the prize. So when you look at across all these sectors, you have, he's approved about 200 million era loans for SMEs, for God's sake, in the last 100 days. So, I mean, what do you expect in terms of infrastructure? It's doing well. All the ongoing road projects across the nukes and crannies of Ondo State is impact on them, is, is given approvals, is, is monitoring, is on site every now and then. Okay, it's so not leaving the office until about sometimes 11 p.m. Holding meetings, you know, strategic meetings and all, what have you. Right, finally. So, what about the, the inner workings of the dynamics of the party? the APC in Ondo State, this is for him to get the party ticket. Get How does that work? This is it. You want to fill a candidate that has the capacity to win election. So when political players sit together, the first thing they look at is that, can Olumide win? Mm. Can John Paul win? It's winnability. So, and when the APC leaders came together, they saw it in him, that this man is going to win. He has the love of the masses. He's acceptable. He's loved across board. APC, PDP, this is the first time in Ondo State where you have people from other political parties, you know, begging, let me use that word, to join the moving train. You have people asking him, asking us that, when do we, he went to Abuja on Thursday 
And a lot of people on their own without being mobilized. They had buses, you know, they had people mobilized and they were all went to Abuja to give him that support. That shows you the kind of support he's getting from his people, we from our people in Ondo We States. certainly wish you the best and him uh, in, the, in, this, in this regard. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You, Mr. John Paul Akindro, who is a spokesperson to the Deputy Governor of Ondo State for coming on the Newsroom Series. Thank you, Olimide. Now, Elsewhere, one of the contenders for the staying in Ondo State, one of the contenders for the Ondo APC governorship ticket, happens to be Senator Jimo Ibrahim, who is also intensifying his efforts towards carrying the party's flag come November. Now, Senator Ibrahim is equipping his campaign supervisors with a list of APC members in all the 203 political wards in the state. According to him, the strategy is deployed by the campaign organization to mobilize party members to vote for him in the April 20th, 2024 APC governorship primary in the state. It's an atmosphere of excitement as 203 ward coordinators of the Ashe Yori movement share and chant solidarity songs at the display of the booklets containing registered members of the All Progressives Congress across the state. The governorship aspirant takes it upon himself to distribute the document. This is the essence of yet another strategic meeting of the campaign team to scale up campaign at the grassroots. Each of these booklets is registered APC member in the world. We have it for 203 wards, and we have it in 1,100 units. So we have distributed to them. So that we want to do direct primaries, then these financial members of APC are the ones that will vote. And they will know them, and they will tick from the register. So that it makes the voting easy and very quick. And then again, it also shows our strength. Leaders of the movement commend the APC aspirant for this new approach to politics in Undo State. I'm learning a new a paradigm in politics where an aspirant will be campaigning for primary as if he's already a candidate, you know, standing the general election. This is um, God's work. You know, I, I happen to believe that this ticket is already belongs to him. The man has worked so hard. Uh, he has stored all the 18 local government, including the uh, 203 world. So I think uh, this ticket belongs to him, no doubt. Apart from printing the names of APC registered members in Ondo State, Senator Jimo Ibrahim says he has cleared the annual dues for 100,000 registered members of the APC in Ondo State. They are quite fine to go, but the key thing is the 100,000 people in our register for primary. The member in our register, we have 487,000 people right now, but this is for primary, 100,000 we are paying for. We can't pay for 400,000 people at 2,300, that will buy 800, 900 million. So the APC will make a lot of money. So we just took 100,000 among them and paid for the primary. And those are the people that are committed to go there and vote on the primary day, and then we win. Senator Ibrahim says his mandate in politics is driven by the passion to serve the people and that he is confident to win the Ondo State Governorship primary. Son. And that's it on Newsroom Series today. Thank you for watching. I'm a little bit